Taylor Swift Eras Tour that's coming to Australia in February has gone through a massive ticket sales frenzy. But have you ever wondered, how can they sell so many tickets so fast? In fact, did you know that there's actually a secret technique behind how they sell tickets at a concert like Taylor Swift? Let's have a look behind the hood and see what's inside. And while we're at it, I'm going to reveal to you a little secret technique known as the boy-girl theory of how ticket sales actually work in order to achieve such massive results. You know, at some point you have to ask the question, why do they put up only one or maybe two dates for a concert instead of putting up maybe five or ten? You know, because surely they're going to sell that many seats, aren't they? And that's probably one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't really consider. Because if you put up, say, 10 dates and allow people to say, well, maybe we could go to this one or maybe we could go back again and book this date a few days later. Try and imagine what it would be like if you went to a concert that was half filled. I mean, no doubt you've probably been on a plane flight that was half filled and wondered, well, how are they making any money to pay for all of this? And the same question has to be asked about concerts. Concerts, the way how they actually sell them is they sell the almost every seat that they've got available. In addition to that, they also have a small proportion of seats known as VIP seats, and they come in different graded forms. So there might be a higher level type of VIP seat, and then there might be an even a diamond level of VIP seats that are yet even more pricier to attain in order to fill up, maybe so those people who want to have just that little bit more access to the uh, professional uh, entertainer that's appearing at the event. Now, if you're wanting to sell tickets to an event that you're running, it might be a seminar, it might be you're wanting to uh, run an entertainment event or a special party or something like that, it's worthwhile taking a closer look at this particular book uh, that's called Oversubscribed by Daniel Priestley. Now, I came across this book a few years ago and I've read it cover to cover. And one of the biggest things that Daniel Priestley talks about, and I fully understand behind why he talks about this sort of thing, and that is to never really satisfy your demand fully for an event that you're running or for a product that you're trying to sell. If you satisfy your demand completely, you're, you're eventually going to shoot yourself in the foot. However, by holding back on the delivery of all of what you've got available, you will then have a steady stream of people who are willing to buy your product and also they'll be willing to pay a slightly higher price for the availability of that product. You won't get that kind of uh, scale if you simply gave it away um, and, and uh, had it always available to people right then and there. So what does boy-girl theory have to do with all of this? Well, boy-girl theory really implies this, that say, you know, you're always available for your potential date. Your potential date is probably not going to be interested in you if you're always available. I mean, they can take you out on this night or that night, and who cares? But if you play a little bit of hard to get, then all of a sudden you're a little bit more desirable. I mean, have you ever walked down the street and seen a guy who looks like the hunchback of Notre Dame standing next to a penthouse pet and you wondered, what could she possibly see in him? Well, it's quite a good chance that the hunchback has probably played a little bit of hard to get. So therefore the penthouse pet had thought, well, maybe, uh, you know, what is he not seeing in me that, you know, I see in him? So she's pursued him, not the other way around. And that's the same way how it works with ticket sales. If you have such a very small amount of availability, they're going to buy those tickets and buy them en masse. And that's what happens with the Taylor Swift event and many others like it. Just have a look in future at all these different concerts and see how they sell out those tickets. Of course, Taylor Swift is very famous, but the theory applies to even people you may not even be aware of when you see the concert at the Sydney Opera House. The same thing. So just take a closer look 
and have a look at these other videos here that I've got on marketing techniques for your events. This is David Newton speaking.